Hello, Chris. How are you, sir? You're <laughs> great, buddy. You got to flip your camera around. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Why are you? Can I ask you a quick question before we get started? One second, buddy, because I want to get my headsets ready and they're not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Why do you, why do you have, why do you have a, what are you, I mean, it's the apple cup beanie, but is it cold where you're at? Is it cold down in Puyallup? It's chilly. We, the wife keeps the temperatures low. We try to help the energy out there. Yeah. <laughs> The energy. It's Apple Cup, baby. It's Apple Cup. I know. Uh, Come Chris on. E I love it. Chris Egan is here. He joins us uh, every single Friday. It's brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. Three locations in Sumner, Puyallup, South Hill, home of the original No Big Deal Pickle Pizza. Uh, book one of their uh, three food tr uh, food trucks for catering, birthday parties, graduations, and corporate events. Uh, find them at Fat Zach's Pizza on Facebook, Instagram, and FatZach'sPizza.com. You can follow Chris on X and Instagram at Chris Egan 5 uh, you would have just seen him at the fair this week, dressed, of course, in the Puyallup uh, look, which is flannel. And uh, he was sampling both a scone and elephant ear. Why didn't you do the idea of putting them together and wrapping it up like a burrito? Well, you mentioned that, uh, Puck, a week ago on this podcast. And a week ago, I was convinced that the elephant ear was better. And then I talked, you know, a lot of people are weighing in on this one. I know you and I have kind of led this discussion, which is just, which is just honestly hilarious to me. There's presidential debates, governor debates, and more people are concerned about what's better right now, a scone or an elephant here. Uh, so what I wanted to do was get them both. I had the wife go get the scones. I got the elephant here. I wanted to give them equal opportunity, fresh, hot, and I wanted to try them both at the same time. And Puck, I'm going to just tell you this. I switched. I switched my tune when I had that hot, fresh scone right out of the oven. It just the maybe they put extra jam. Maybe they knew what, what was going on because it just melted in my mouth, and it was just pure delight. Went to the elephant ear first. I mean, it was good, Puck. It was good, but it wasn't. It wasn't the scone. So I've switched my tune. If you're going to get both of them and you're going to eat them both hot and fresh, I'm going scone. Uh, it's a I'm yeah, you're right. with it. I hear you, I, but it, it yeah. disappoints me to hear you. You change sure. your tune because I just well, think that the elephant ear is the, is the gold standard of a fair, a fair food. I know, and a lot of people, you know, but you, you, you've got to go with one or the other. And I said, let's have a fair taste test. Let's do it and do it right. And so I did it. And my opinion, the scone right out of the oven, you can't top it. Uh, next week, Puck, I'm going to take the the, the sample is going to be the onion burger versus Ooh. the corn dog now how about the timing on this puck fair day for the Puyallup school district was wednesday right that's kind of a traditional day where the wife and i go 50 years in a row i've been to the fair i think i've been with my wife probably 25 26 of those times to the fair uh this is what everybody should do if you're going to the fair guess what i had on thursday my yearly physical so i knew i had to i couldn't i couldn't I couldn't eat that much, so I knew I couldn't eat that much. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have an elephant here. I'm going to have a scone. I'm going to have one onion burger. That's it. So, yeah, you know but that, when he when he means that's it, that's a well, lot. I knew, that's a I, lot. You know. Here's what I don't understand. <laughs> what I don't understand is that you had you had ceviche. No, I, I'm not getting ceviche at the fair, sir. Uh, so I got an inside source that said, Chris, just try the ceviche. It, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good, it's a new booth. I think you're going to like it. And it was date night. Uh... And we, needed, we needed a, uh, let's just say an appetizer. So the wife, you know, very physically fit, you know, very mentally, you know, sound with her health said, you know, let's do, let's share a ceviche. And it wasn't bad, but I knew in my mind, uh... Puck, I was still getting the onion burger. I was still getting the scone. But... I was still getting the elephant ear. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe instead of the loaf of French fries, let's start off with ceviche. So, can I just can I just say that it concerns me that when they get the fish for the ceviche, that it's it's from the Puyallup River, and that's what? I've seen the Puyallup River, <laughs> and you know it's it's a little dicey, Chris. It's fresh though; it's right on the river. They bring it right from the river. 
It's caught by a carny. There's the best thing is a carny catches it and he brings it up and fillets it right there for you. He probably the carny gets it from the river, brings it up, and he goes over to the yeah. to the to the to the you know the the little the, the space the tent where they're selling everything. They got the knives and with with the headset. And he's like, I got you the brand new knives. Come on over here, sit on down. We got the brand new knives here. <laughs> if you can get these right now. We we're selling these for nineteen ninety nine. If you buy them Fuck. all right, if you if you buy two sets, we give them to you for nine ninety nine. It drove me crazy, Puck. It was worse than walking on the beaches of Cabo, was walking through those booths at the fair. I mean, everybody wants to say, can we clean your jewelry? Can we give you some conditioner? Uh, How's your knife? Uh, you, how's your flagpole? I'm, my flagpole's fine. Excuse me? Sir? <laughs> Pardon me? How's my flagpole? That's what I was asked, Puck. I mean, they just, everybody wants I get it. If you're walking through there, you better be prepared for it. But my goodness, how many, how much caramel corn and beef jerky can you buy? I mean, how much you need? What, what's the? So, uh, did you go? One of my favorite things. Also, I love going through the whatever the 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 four H the animal. You know where yeah. the, where the cows are. I love that. I just I uh, freaking love that. And then. Yeah, it's the just, smell of manure, uh, manure, just, and all these 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 high school girls, you know, and and boys, they're all dressed up, you know, and they're, yeah. they're parading, you know, their their heifers around. Is that is that the right one? Is that I the think right that's term? I think that's a, a farm <laughs> word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, and you know what? Tr give Love them it. credit. They're they're legitly farmers. They're legitly yeah. wearing their overalls, their Oshkosh Bagosh stuff, and they're they're legit. They're on the farm. Now let's go. Let's fast forward to last night, Puck. I'm walking into the fair, and I'm going to Walker Hayes. I just wrap up soccer oh, nice. practice. The wife wife wants to go see. You know, let's go to Applebee's. You know, he's got one hit. Uh, Walker yeah. Hayes. Uh, sure. You know, I'm like, all right, let's just do this. Uh, I'm walking in, and literally, Puck, I see like friends of ours. You know, one of them is a plumber. One of them is a builder. Uh, one of them, you know, works for a pharmaceutical company. Okay, what did I say none of them are, Puck? None of them work on a ranch and live in Montana. You wouldn't have known that last night, Puck. I mean, I'm, I'm walking in, I'm like, what the? It's like those old country western photos you used to do with your family. Everybody had, hey, how are we doing? We're heading to Walker Hayes. I'm like, I guess I, I I came in with my baseball cap on and my new level uh, pullover, but uh, oh, you know I wasn't new level. <laughs> I wasn't wearing the part last night, and the women last night, puck, were wearing the sombrero hats like they were at an East Lake baseball game. The hunter boots it, and sombrero hats were on. Last yeah, night. it well they, we the ur, we call it the urban sombrero. The urban sombrero. The I urban think. sombrero with the hunter boots and then the yeah. the, the big Stanley mug. Yeah, a lot of yeah. that out last night. A lot, at Walker of, Hayes. lot, lot of, lot of white wine in that Stanley mug. Yes, yeah, they were, yeah. They, they were definitely doing that last. And did you see what she's wearing? Over, do you, you see what she's wearing over there? I mean, she just looks like. I mean, ugh. answer this is a great Wazoo alum that has had a share of uh, you know um, alcohol over the years. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, you. I'm at the bar last night, and of course, you know me, Puck. What do I get? I get the margarita. Of course uh, you do. And, Standard. Some of the some of the guys that with you know they go with Coors Light or Rainier beer. They get to walk out of the bar and head into the uh, stadium. I can't leave with my margarita. I don't understand. I don't. That doesn't What's, make what, any sense. That doesn't, doesn't make, make any sense. sense to me. I don't understand why. Why couldn't I leave with my margarita, but they could leave with their Coors Light? So in the concert, they could they can take their beer out inside the yes. where their seats are, but you can't yeah. take out a mixed drink. I couldn't take my mixed drink. My yeah, margarita. this this state. I don't. I don't. I, that makes I don't, zero I didn't sense. It. I'm Did sure you get a law somewhere? But so I just had to down my margarita fast, and how, you know. Well, and you've been known to down a margarita <laughs> fast. Do your buddies look at you odd? I'm like, can you get what? Are, what are we doing here? A nah, silver it's bullet? Usually, nah, it's usually the bartenders. But then you know, I when I ask for a second lime, they're just like, all right, just go with it. I'm like, you know, I give them a nice tip, you know. <laughs> I like a good mar. I mean, I'm with you here, Chris. I like a good margarita. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, Puck. I did feel very old this morning, by the way. As we well, we will talk sports, but I haven't even told oh. this story to my wife. I stop off to get my a coffee at a stand I've never been at. I was I was uh, on the way to go see my parents, so I get what stop was, off. And what get was a, hey? What was she wearing at the stand? Well, <laughs> that's the, uh, this is attra attractive gal, and she says. I asked for an ice mocha. This is where I feel really old, Buck. 
<laughs> she goes, so you anchor, anchor the sports this week? And I'm like, oh, okay, she knows who I am. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like feeling really young. And then she goes, hey, well, say hi to your son. I went to high school with him. And I'm like, oh. Wait a minute, but was it one of these places where they're... No, I don't go to the Bikini Barista. Was it a Bikini legit. Barista? No, I don't go to the Bikini Barista. Have you I ever gone to one? At one time, like 16, <laughs> 17 years ago. That's the last uh, time. And oh, it was I went to... I went to yeah. oh, mine was not an accident and uh, we went to, we went to we were me and my son were in Shelton you know that have you ever been to the drive-in movie theater in Shelton uh, I've not been to the, Shelton uh, it's a great place to go pick up some uh, baby oysters and Meth? clams but oh, okay. I haven't been to the uh, drive-in Well there's you know there's only like three there's like a hand, there's like three drive-in movie theaters left in this state okay. one's in Shelton one's in like um Port Townsend, I believe, and there's one more I'm I'm blanking on. Is Anyways. the one next to the B and I in Tacoma? Is that done? I think so. You remember yeah, the I one on the B and I where they had the gorilla? I think there was a. Uh... I I never went to that one when we were okay. kids. We went to the one in Auburn. Oh yep, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, we okay, went to that so one. So you too. remember that one, the, the Auburn? Yeah. So so I and I believe they're all okay. So so we went to the one in Shelton, and we're it was, I think we we're watching Goonies. And we're driving. I'm like, I need a coffee. I'm I'm tired. And there's only in this in Shelton. There's one coffee place that was open. And, and it. it was one. It was a bikini barista. Oh. And my son is I don't know how old this is. He was seven. And he's he, I'm like we're pulling up, and he looks over. And he's like, his eyes just like sauce was like, oh my god. And she was wearing just like nothing, just absolutely nothing. I'm like, are the oh my prices god. more at the bikini baristas? Talk. Are they, uh, uh, well, are you just let me expected check. to tip more? Let me check my punch card. Um, <laughs> no, I think they are. I think they're the same. I think they're the same. Um, I think you are expected to tip a little more, right? Cause you're okay. getting, you're getting a, you're getting a little show here, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, we'll solve some mysteries. Today. Yeah. As we we have, always do. <laughs> what what did you, you saw Walker Hayes last night? He sings Walker the Hayes Applebee song. Okay. Sings the he's got a couple more hits. He's got a he's actually got a cool hit puck you and I would you would love. It's about uh coaching his kid in baseball and just wow. kind of learning as a parent how he'd get so excited when his kid hit a home run, but he would be mad when he struck out and how he just kind of had to you know uh, kind of learn as a parent and as a coach and uh, take off the coaching hat. So, I mean, he kind of speaks to uh, you and I a lot in some of his songs, you know, and just he he's a proud dad. I think he has six kids. I uh, had a couple of his kids on oh. stage last night. Uh, so, well, yeah, he's been busy. Uh, and this is a guy that was uh, – <laughs> This was a guy, I think my, my wife reads all the bios uh, on these uh, acts, but used to work at Costco, second um, job to help help the family as he was an aspiring artist and uh, uh, got a big hit. The next thing you know, uh, you're oh, a mega star. Yeah, and you're yeah. traveling and you're at the, uh, he said, the Pooh Owlet Fair. And so he said it was good to be at the Pooh Owlet Fair last Love night. It. And, uh, you know, so, uh, and next week, I'm hopeful to go to Alabama on Wednesday and Thomas Rhett uh, on Thursday. So I'm hitting the I country. I think we'll act. be there. Th we're going to be there Thursday. Well, the Puckets I'll, and the Egans will hang out and have yeah. some scones together. I yeah, like we're that. gonna we're gonna fire up. We're gonna fire up and, and make it down there on Thursday. Will the wife ha wear the urban sombrero that night? I'll get her to. I'll yeah. get her to. I'll You're see if right. Noel will wear one till. That yeah. would be fun. We'll get it. We'll get a group picture. How many years in the Apple Cup is this for you? Are you covering the game on Saturday? I think I'm going to pop over. I got to anchor that night. Uh, but this is uh, 20, 23 years now of covering wow. for myself. And this, you know, I could go back to when I was an intern at KSDW uh, with Rod Simons. And I probably covered it a couple of times there in college as well. But uh, over two decades of Apple Cup, I'm going to be honest with you, Puck. I, I enjoyed my favorites were that day after Thanksgiving, driving over with uh, – the longtime photographer Alan Reed and you know we would head over there and you know some days you know it was so packed in I think there was twice we actually had to stay in Spokane because Pullman was so crowded uh mm. sometimes you got to go into Idaho um 
that night, the night before the game, sometimes there was snow on the field. I mean, there's so many great memories. I think uh, that disaster of an apple cup in Pullman uh, when the Huskies ended up losing. uh, And then after the press conference, it wasn't softy, but it was somebody else asking Tyrone Willingham if he was even going to go on the trip to Cal uh, after they lost that game. It was one of the greatest questions, one of the greatest post-game questions of all time. We did the interview, I think, from the weight, one of the Wazoo weight rooms. Uh, Uh, I mean, Brandon Gibson and his two touchdowns at Husky Stadium, and I remember saying, you know, to Brandon Gibson, what is it like representing the Cougs in Puyallup? And he just stops me and goes, it's the Cougs, and I'm from the South Hill. Oh, he is frozen right, up Brandon, on yes, us. Yes, you are. So, yeah. it was, it's just, there's so many great memories. Yeah. I'm glad the tradition is continuing. I think Lumen Field is going to be rocking. Uh, I have not seen the Cougs in person. I've done highlights two weekends in a row. And this team's oh. legit. I think it's going to be a great battle. Honestly, I, I, I don't know where to go on this game on, on no. Saturday, on who's going to win it. I, I, I I think it's I, I think it's got a chance to be a really great game. I don't think you I don't think we know anything about either team. I mean, having watched you know both of them, I mean they both they both have uh, struggled at times, and then you, they they end up pulling away you know late in the game, so or in the second half of the game. So I, I don't know. I mean, I I go I'm nervous every time going into this game. I didn't yeah. give them much of a chance last year, and then last year's Apple Cup was one of the great. I mean, even though that we lost. You know, just because it and it stinks that your team loses, but I can still say that was one of the greatest Apple Cups I've ever seen. It was awesome. It was great theater, everything that was on the line. You know, for Washington, the fact that the the Cougars weren't given much of a chance in that game and they played them tough, played them as probably as you know of any you know other than Michigan, probably played them as tough as anyone played them. You know, last year, and then the, you know the guts to call that you know the play that they ended up calling uh, there in fourth down, despite. Massive holding on that play, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was great theater, and and you know I I think that it it will continue, and and I think initially when the news came out, I I didn't want it to continue. I, I know that, and and I think it's okay to change your opinion. I think that's feelings are hurt. You're angry. You're angry at what the situation was, but I think as you take time and you step back, right, and you let kind of your emotions cool down a little bit. I think you you realize that yeah it it is important. I think the game now takes a a different tone to it and a different feeling, and that may be a a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it always did have kind of a you know a a rivalry that was had some bitterness to it, but it did cross the line. I think it, as years go on, it's going to start to get a little bit more hatred involved in it, and maybe that's a good thing. Uh, we do see right, Chris, a lot of rivalries of teams that don't play in the same conference anymore. So uh, it's not unheard of. West Virginia mm-hmm. Pitt, right? That's a big one. Colorado State, Colorado. You know, Utah and BYU for a while when they were not in the, in the conference together. So I think it can work. Uh, I hope it gets back. I know it's going to get back on campuses starting next year. And then we'll just see when it's going to be played. Um, I don't know what the date is. I don't think they've established that yet. I don't think it will be at the end of the season anymore. It probably will be in the beginning of the year. and It's probably just something we're going to have to get used to. I'm probably going to go way deeper than you want here in regards sure. to your thoughts. And I, and I remember these thoughts when, uh, you know, when UW was moving and Wazoo was staying and they were talking about the rivalry. And I still remember, um, you know, we were talking about it on King five and we had a lot of comments from Coug fans saying the same thing you were saying. I just, I, I wish this thing would just be over. I don't want to play them. They don't deserve sure. to play us. And this is where I'm getting deep a little bit, maybe more than I should here, but you know, during my brother's service, my brother that passed away, I remember saying the line, you know, you, you know, you die once and then you die when people stop talking about you. And that's where I continue mm. to carry on his name. And, and I hate to even compare somebody's life to an Apple Cup. But with that in mind, if you take away the rivalry and, and nobody starts talking about the Cougs and the Huskies, then, then basically that rivalry just kind of dies out in the history. I mean, the great history of these two rivalries and, and all the great battles from the snow bowl to the, to the, to the, to the toilet bowl, to, to the, you know, UW band coming over and getting that accident and the Wazoo band playing their fight song too. I mean, mm. so many great, you know, Colin Henderson, yeah, you know, with the greatest quarterback rating in Apple cup history, the Piaul Viking that's thrown a couple touchdowns. touchdowns, uh, you know, there, there's just so much good history 
and, and I didn't want that history to die out because even though we would hear the stories, basically, I mean, it's sad, Puck. We don't, you remember that great rivalry, the in-state rivalry, Western and Central Washington? Nobody sure. talks about that anymore. And that was a fun battle between those two schools. But oh. Western, you know, got rid of their football program and nobody mentions it anymore. And I, mm-hmm. I was worried that a year may pass and be fine, two years pass and three years. And, it, and if you just get rid of that, then it, it just nobody would ever talk about it. And this is a fun rivalry. These are two schools recruiting after the same kids. I mean, everybody in the state of Washington has the chance, hopefully, to play for Wazoo or UW. And, and the, you know, you got Javinsky Schlenbaker from Schlenbaker from Squalicum. This is a kid probably wanted to go to UW, goes to Wazoo. He's going to have a chance to score a touchdown against the Huskies tomorrow. Um, so there's just too many good storylines, and I wanted those. As a storyteller, I wanted that to continue, and I'm glad it is right now. And I'm glad to see the Pac-12 is building up again. Yeah. It's going to become yeah. a strong conference. They're going to add more strength to that conference. So. I think things are looking good for the Cougs, and uh, you know what? Like you said, I don't think you have to be in the same conference to have a great rivalry. So no, and and you know what? As as it evolves, and I think everybody knows. I mean, like this new revamp Pac-12. It's not the same Pac-12. Everybody knows that. Um, is it just a glorified version of what the Mountain West is? I mean, I understand how people say that. I mean, you're taking the you know the better teams from that conference and, and trying trying to create your own. I I think what I like is at least we ha- you you talked about your brother, you know, with, yeah. with Brian. Is that if we stop talking about the Pac-10, Pac-12, it goes away. And no mm-hmm. one remembers it. And no, and I know that this version of it, it's not like the version of it, you know, with you know the Don James and and all the great USC teams and, and all of that. But what it does is it keeps that name still alive, mm-hmm. and it keeps that that logo still present. And you know what? We get back. We get we get Pac-12 after dark back. It, it's a little things like that that I think people have grown accustomed to. And I don't know. You know, Chris, in two, three, you know, well, actually, it's in two years, but you know, in four years, five years, who knows what college football is going to be? I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe those teams that left, they come back, and they, do, you know, and whatever college football looks like in six, seven, ten years, it's back to you know the 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 regional side of things where the West Coast teams are all playing in the same conference again. So I, I just think there's a lot of movement. I'm glad they they've kept the name alive. And it's going to be different. And yeah, I, I think my opinion initially was I didn't want to play the game anymore. I'm not still happy that it's played over there or it's played here. I mean, the Cougs did get screwed on this and it should be in Pullman. And so that I think it's okay to still be upset and, and bothered by that. I don't ever want to see it played there again. It, I don't want to see it on a neutral side. It's stupid. College games need to be played on college campuses. Period. It's like when Washington would play Gonzaga and they played at Key Arena. Dumb. Play it at yeah. the, play it at, at in Spokane. Play it at Heck Ed. I don't want to see neutral site games, and so it's going to go back to that. That's good, but you got to get now more familiar with it being played. You know, early in the season. It's got, that's going to take some adjustment, but you know, it's. I think it, we'll we'll get used to it pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be a fun game. I think it's going to be like you said. It's good theater. Uh, the interesting thing, Puck, I spoke at the Tacoma Athletic Commission yesterday, average age, maybe 70, 80. And, and the biggest issue. I was uh, going to comment on some of the yeah. pictures I thought uh, I saw. What would it, a 78 ish? 78 ish. Yeah. Uh, but but the biggest issue and this is where some of the older audience is having trouble with change. You know, I don't know how many questions I got asked this is Chris, you know, how can I watch the Apple Cup, oh. you know, and, and there's a lot of Husky fans right now struggling with watching this team and and we saw during the Olympics streaming went really well for NBC and Peacock and they got a lot of money off that and a lot of people jumped on the streaming but to have to purchase NBC Peacock to watch the Apple Cup I know there's an older crowd out there that's struggling with this one so uh you know it's, in, it's including it's an older lady that including an older woman that and is about a four foot nine, four foot 10. And I don't understand what the game is uh, from a Paul's bow <laughs> who has called and texted me a million times asking me where the game is. I'm like, it's on Peacock. Well, I think I have Peacock. I said, you don't have it. You it's not on your, I, it, I looked on my, I looked on my, uh, it's finitive. It's, it's right. There. It says Peacock. I go, 
that's not the streaming. Just trust me. You've got to sign up for the stream. Oh, well, that, that doesn't make any sense. And in fact, I'm not going to watch the game then. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Good Lord. That's going on in a lot of homes right now. I, I bet it is. And I bet it is. Everything's going to be flipping on. Peacock. Peacock, yeah. where are you, Peacock? Where so. are where is Peacock? Yes, there, uh, people are gonna have to figure are gonna have to figure out where Peacock is uh, coming up tomorrow. What uh, what is the uh, King Five? This is a good one. The King Five big game of the week. You got a juicy uh, one, sir. Yeah, this and you know what? Shout out to Week One. We were at the Spaghetti Bowl, which this is yeah. you know I always tell people. Uh, you know, like, oh, yeah, when I hear these stories, all oh, the, the, the heydays of high school are over. No, then you weren't at the Capitol Olympia game week one where they had six to seven thousand people at that game. Uh, and these were two schools that, you know, may not win a state title, but it was pretty cool to see everybody at Capitol Olympia show up. Good Chris atmosphere. Lost. Oh, there you and go. Absolutely incredible. And then this week, we've got a dandy. Uh, this week, we have uh, Lake Stevens, who has won two state titles in a row. Their head coach is a guy by the name of Tom Try, who has just built a dynasty at Lake Stevens. Uh, I, I mentioned two state titles in a row, uh, but they were also – they played second twice. They've been basically – you know, in the top eight for the last decade. Uh, and, and he's produced a lot of kids that have gone on to play in college. Uh, it's just a fun atmosphere. You were up there last year with me at Lake Stevens. And this week, this is what I love. This is always what I want to, after the state championships in high school in basketball and football, I wanted the 3A and 4A winners to play each other and the 1A and 2A winners. Well, this Friday, they will be taking on the 3A state champions, uh, the Bellevue Wolverines that beat Yelm last year at Husky Stadium. Uh, another well-coached team, Michael uh, Knipe. Uh, Knip, Knipe, I got to double-check my pronunciation on that. Played for the Huskies, took over Bellevue. Him and his brother have done a phenomenal job there, uh, just building up that uh, program back. And he's a great coach. That's all I can say. Is he, Michael does a really good job with Bellevue. Uh so it's going to be a good battle, 4A versus 3A, the two champs facing off. Um, so we'll see. It's going to be fun. There is a uh, there is an outfit. I just stumbled upon these guys. Have you heard of the this outfit that I think is broadcasting the game time, the Snohomish Sports? Have you heard of these uh, guys? Uh, they have done some. I remember they did some last year, Puck. I think actually yeah. – I think they had even somebody on the field doing sideline reporting. I thought, that was, it, was, I thought yeah. it was great. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and, and, I'll, and I'll you're right first. about – Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say that, that that Lake Stevens crowd that we were up there last year is just phenomenal. Yeah. Well, what he's done is he's built a program where, you, you know what, it, you, you have to be good to make this team, but yeah. everybody wants to play for Lake Stevens football, and they have depth. They have uh, – I mean, the numbers they get up there are absolutely amazing. Uh, this is a high school – uh, Jason has done an awesome job as an athletic director. You see what they've done in other sports like wrestling. They've been a dynasty for decades as well. Uh, it, and it's just a fun community, and it's where everybody's going to be on a Friday night. And that's why I gave a shout-out to Capital Olympia because high school sports is not dead. It's uh, alive and well, and it's cool to see these programs. And we need to continue to shine a light on these programs because uh, we see so much crap on the TV every week about kids doing this and kids doing that. And uh, – there's actually a lot of kids out there doing some good things, so it's pretty cool. All right, we'll, uh, we'll be tuning in tonight uh, there to King 5. Chris Egan joins us uh, every Friday, the first uh, live edition here with uh, Chris. It's all brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. They've got great locations all across the, uh, the, the South Sound, Sumner, Puyallup, South Hill, home of the original No Big Deal Pickle Pizza. One of the uh, Book one of their uh, three food trucks right now for catering, birthday parties, graduations, and corporate events. You can find Fat Zach's Pizza on Facebook, Instagram, FatZach'sPizza.com. That QR code, you scan that, that's going to take you right to FatZach'sPizza.com. All right, you enjoy your weekend. Uh, hey, we'll you talk next, you real quick, uh, next Friday. Give me, give me two names, Bucket, on the Cougar offense, and we'll give you a Keith Jackson rollout here uh, for this show here for the Apple give me a Give me a John Mateer and a Way Sean Parker. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Whoa, Nelly, welcome everybody to Lumen Field. It's the fourth quarter, 20 seconds ticking down. The Cougars trail the mighty Huskies by three points. It's third down and 
pull the cover. Jack Decker looked to his clipboard, looks to the stands. Jason Buckland is passed out next to Jim Moore with a popcorn bag. Johnny Mateer calls the signals. Mateer drops back. Mateer looking. He's looking. Mateer fires. Wayne Shuttle! It's like he's never left us, sir. You're the best. Seconds left now for the Huskies. It's Billy Joe Hobart. Billy Joe Hobart. No, he's not from Texas. He's from Poole, Washington. Hobart looks back. He fires deep, and that's Dean Looker with the catch. Touchdown, Husky. Fuck it. Good to see you, my friend. <sighs> Called back because he's suspended by the NCAA for taking well, a trade. He team. was moving that ball faster than a Camaro going down I-5. <laughs> You're the best, Egan. We'll talk to you next week. All right, buddy.